Hi everyone, it's Stu here from 3B. Finally got round to doing the video of all the benchmarks that I that I've done and the overclocking settings that I've achieved with the EBGA Black Edition, the 2080 Ti, the one with the very thin cooler on it. Uh, as you may recall, I did a video showing you uh, me installing the NZXT Kraken G12 uh, cooling bracket um, and the all-in-one H55 from Corsair that came to a sum total of £60, which is about $80. And the results that I've managed to get are pretty good. So I'll show you my screen in a minute, but you'll actually see what I'm seeing here. So I ran superposition and um, from uh, unen uh, Unigine, Unengine, how do you pronounce that? And the results that we got were pretty good. I'm really pleased with the results that I've got. Um, so I will first of all tell you about those the, 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 the big results that I got. But one of the things I do want to know is uh, caused a bit of real concern. And uh, when I looked at the all in one, there was a, the, the thermal paste on it, which was pre applied by Corsa, was really quite poor. And always with pre applied paste, it, there's always a worry that it's dry and been there for too long. So I was always concerned that that may be the case. And as you can see from this, um, I found that the core, the core clock, even without um, uh, overclocking it, just kept fluctuating. <laughs> it was going nuts, as you can see here, just going absolute nuts. So uh, it soon became apparent that what was happening is that the the coolant or the, the thermal paste on the all-in-one wasn't cooling the GPU on the card effectively. Uh, so I got some new paste uh, and um, we then did some proper benchmarking and then so, so things got very interesting indeed. So much so that we're 132 4K optimized. Uh, 12620 um, is our top score and the results that we've got are really very good indeed. Uh, core clock, the maximum that we got was 2055 megahertz. We had a memory clock of 7784. I'd actually set it at 7785 plus 785. And I had a stable temperature of 71 degrees. Now if you look, you can see there's the stable temperature that we've that we got with the with the uh, with the water cooling solution. Um, GPU memory clock stable, GP, uh, the, the actual core clock really good, really stable, um, just, just sort of ticking along nicely at 20, 25. And really very good results considering this is the cheapest um, 2080 Ti um, graphics card that you can buy and you can get comparable results to the higher end um, graphics card. Admittedly, some of the upper end graphics cards, the really expensive ones can go maybe 150 megahertz, maybe 200 megahertz more, perhaps. I've seen less, um, but is it really worth it for that, like four, four, five hundred dollars in some cases? Considering that my water cooling solution was only $80, um, we're getting a nice stable temperature at 71 degrees. That's that's a real bargain, a real bargain indeed. And it doesn't look too shabby either. This we're just running at, um, you know, this is uh, just you know normal temperatures as it's running, you know, just as I'm using the computer normally, without being putting any stress or load on it, and it's got 32 degrees. Um, one of the things I do need to mention as regards the uh, fans and the removal of the fans and the installation of a cooling solution, so, such as the NZXT one and the, the Corsair G CPU cooler, um, is that I believe there's some kind of uh, 
that there's there must be something in the gpu that knows when the fans are attached or not uh, the reason i say that is when i took the fans off um i and just set everything up i couldn't do just a standard default uh benchmark you know just with the default settings at 1350 7000 megahertz on the memory it wouldn't do it and what was happening it was actually sort of putting the gpu clock speed way down even on default and the same with the memory and it was it was kind of really odd and i have a feeling that maybe the evga black edition knows if those fans are attached or not and if it senses that they're not then it will lower the clock so i've not been able to put it at the default settings and benchmark it with that we've only been able to overclock it which is not a problem it's not a big deal at all um, so that may happen to you when or if you water cool your your evga black edition but we've got some really good results you know stable clocks at um, 2025 i had that running on a loop um, for several hours to see how stable it was yesterday monday i had it running at 4k on metro exodus with everything on and i was streaming that for two hours and uh yeah so it went really really well it's a very stable um overclock i believe so that's my overclock of the 2080 ti the evga black edition do you have an evga black edition are you thinking of water cooling it are you going to use the um evga's own solution for water cooling or are you going to go the nzxt route like i have um or you're going to go all in, all out and have a you know an all a, a, a complete system water cool you know with crazy prices um let me know are you just going to stick with the standard cooler and you know what are your overclocks have you overclocked with the standard cooler what did you get um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts, let me know your own findings with your own overclocks of the Black Edition. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated. And I'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks again. Take care.